So welcome everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Melanie Barham from the DVM Project and I'm joined today by Dr. Ivan Zak. Um, so Dr. Ivan, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and um, about your career path and how you got to where you are? Hi, well, thanks for inviting me, uh, Melanie. And um, uh, I, I don't know how far to start and which details to give. Uh, maybe, maybe sort of the uh, the veterinary angle journey. Um, so I, I graduated, well, I was in the last year of vet school in Ukraine when I decided to move to Canada. Um, and uh, in the last year of vet school there, I, um, the, our family uh, decided to move. So when I came to Canada, uh, typical, I guess, immigrant story, a veterinary profession in Ukraine is not as respected as in North America. So I was okay. um, I was keeping it as a secret that I'm a vet uh, when I arrived to Canada. And, uh, but then I was trying to find the path to become a veterinarian in, in Canada. And I realized that it's, uh, it's an interesting and respected profession. Uh, you're called doctor and things like that. So, uh, so I started in the clinic uh, four hours working as the animal kennel attendant, uh, feeding, walking, washing the litter boxes, and the other four hours uh, cleaning the vet clinic for eight bucks an hour. I remember it as right now in Toronto. Uh, then I went to, uh, then I applied to PI, to vet school, and by uh, the luck of someone dropping out, I uh, was accepted there, uh, finished um, uh, Atlantic Vet College, uh, which I enjoyed, uh, and, uh, and overall loved Atlantic Canada, that's why I'm, uh, I moved here and I live in New Brunswick now. So after that, I had a weird experience, um, I had a job lined up in BC, uh, in Fraser Valley, uh, and, I, and I wanted to focus on radiology, that was sort of my passion. Um, and all of a sudden I went to Russia in my last year on PI for external experience. Uh, and uh, they have pretty amazing surgeons there. So, uh, and one day I was trying to submit a histo sample. They said, we don't have a histo lab. And uh, I went back to Canada, talked to the chief of um, diagnostic lab downstairs and they offered me to build a lab in Russia. So I built wow. a... <laughs> So I built the first diagnostic lab, veterinary diagnostic lab in Russia in the next year after graduation. And then that didn't go particularly well. Uh, I don't recommend anybody building business in Russia, but that's a different <laughs> story to tell. Uh, but after that, I came back and kind of uh, moved across the country to Pacific and worked across Canada in um, mostly emergency hospitals, but also did a lot of locums. So my model was to work as an ER doc and then do locums for all surrounding hospitals, which was very interesting. Uh, lots of learning came out of that. Uh, saw different scope and uh, types of practices. I helped build practices. I helped selling practices, manage practices. Um, and that all sort of collected into my hatred towards treatment sheets on the clipboards oh, <laughs> in yeah. every yep. hospital. <laughs> and I was trying to find a solution for that and there was none. Uh, the Excel sheet wasn't available on the iPads at that time uh, and there was no Google Sheets at that time. So, so we ended up, uh, I ended up connecting with a high school classmate of mine from Ukraine and as a true startup would build SmartFlow uh, maybe some of the listeners know what that is. Um, I think it was sort of the first portable treatment sheet on the veterinary market and uh, slowly transitioned from veterinary to purely software and business. And it was an interesting transition on its own. Uh, there might be an interesting story how that happens because it's quite a uh, unnerving experience when you're thinking from the comfortable vet position to become full-time entrepreneur when you have a family and kids and things like that. Uh, but uh, that ended with a successful exit. So IDEX um, acquired us in 2018. And I spent about a year, just short of a year there, where I became a general manager of software division. And, uh, and then after that started my new gig, which is a veterinary integration solutions, which is focusing on um, optimizing um, a veterinary consolidators using big data. That's cool. where I'm at. <laughs> okay, so that is a really wide and varied background. So I want to circle back to a couple of things. So first of all, um, 
I, I have to, that's amazing to have come from, come from another country and then to, have, you know, you've basically had to start all over again and had to start and do veterinary school twice. So one, I think that it was it actually, how was it to do like a second round of veterinary school after having done it already? Well, I, you know, in a way people, people usually think that it would be easier. Um, I think it was harder. I don't, everything that I was studying in Ukraine was more focused on agriculture and large animal. Okay. And, and here it's sort of equal focus, uh, even if you're interested more in small animal, which I was. So, and also a different language. So when you're yeah. focusing on, on, you know, studying something that is very narrow professional uh, field, and then you're trying to also learn it. Uh, I had, you know, I had a spoken English, but I, I didn't have professional. So, so lots of people think that it probably was easier, but it wasn't because of the different language. And um, I think Google was then around. Uh, and but I was literally re writing down the words that I don't understand during the lecture, and then going home, translating them, and then doing homework. And I ended up in the first three, four months, I remember I was counting the words, it was up to 130 words a day that I just didn't know what they were talking about. Oh my so they, goodness. It was a lot, it was a lot. Uh, but what I think, what I found interesting is that I had to accelerate and commit so much time, so much more time than I think other students. Then once I caught up with them, the momentum was so, I was so accelerated that I was studying really fast new material. So I thought it, it really helped with the discipline and dynamic. Uh, but I can't say it was easy. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, that sounds, yeah, I basically did it. It's almost like three times the work really. Yeah. Sort of. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so he probably had earned like three veterinary degrees. So, um, so then to go back to the part about, you know, transitioning from practice to being an entrepreneur, um, talk to me about that as far as, you know, I, I know I hear a lot from veterinarians, you know, I've invested so much time to become a really great veterinarian. How do I, um, how do I give that up? Or how do I, you know, what about transitioning into, and then the scariness of, of transitioning into, which you touched upon, uh, upon a little bit of transitioning to be an entrepreneur full time. Yeah, I, you know, it's, I, I hear this more than I used to. Um, personally, when I was already working on this innovation, I've seen, I went through this period of time where all my classmates were, you know, posting on Facebook that they got this residency and then they became that specialist and this specialist. And I thought of myself as only this ER doc that's doing locum that, you know, I had the dream to become radiologist and now I'm pursuing some dream that it's not, it's not clear whether it will come true, but um about 10 years later, I know that a lot of my classmates reached out and they were asking me, how do you actually get out of this? Because they have quite a lot of student loans and they want to switch mm -hmm. the field because I think that the, in general, the, the professions like veterinary and lawyers, doctors, they're not like they used to be. People thought of them as the lifelong profession. I think that people have much more dynamic attitude towards what they do in life. Uh, maybe it's just the, you know, the era that we live in, but I don't think that anybody needs to switch completely. I made the choice of pursuing entrepreneurial career and I helped two together. It's just that whether you see the clear cutoff where you can support your family doing the, the next thing by giving up the other thing. And it, it's never smooth. Uh, I had a, you know, my wife just came from another country. We have a, we had a, one-year-old son when I made that decision not to go back to practice. And it was a difficult time. We were really broke. Um, and then you have all your loans, you have all the mortgages and things like that. It's very, it's very difficult. And a lot of people fail. So it's not for everybody. But I think if you really have a dream and you're pursuing it and there are signs that it's becoming successful, then maybe that's sort of the the time to to switch completely but but i wouldn't recommend anybody say okay i'm done with vet and let's just start i don't know uh raising i don't know christmas trees right or something <laughs> like that like i wouldn't no. jump to that right <laughs> yeah i think that's an interesting that's a really interesting point um and so it's having the cur i think but i'd love to i'd love to kind of hear your idea of like seems like you followed your curiosity so you followed something you were really interested in um you know, you've, you've, and you found a solution for something and you gave it a try. So I'd love to hear 
um, your perspective on that as far as what that actually felt like in the moment or whether, you know, did, did you feel compelled or like called to do it or was it more like, uh, okay, I'm just interested in this and I'm gonna, gonna try it out. I think that uh, any, any sort of innovation and, and, you know, I, I, I only started things that were new. Maybe there's also things that are sort of, you know, created path and you can, you know, be a veterinarian and then start at McDonald's or, or Tim Hortons where everything is prepackaged. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, it is a franchise and it's a guaranteed. You can look at the models, you can look at the revenue. Yeah. But I started things that were always innovative. Um, and, um, and I just, I just truly was excited about solving a problem. And there is some, I don't know who said that, but innovation comes from frustration. I was super frustrated with those treatment sheets and I really wanted to replace that. And then I truly believe that people have that problem. Like many veterinarians will have that problem. And I wanted to solve it for them. It was yeah. never about the money. Uh, I would love this to work. And the first book I bought, uh, I just found it actually the other day in the, in the closet. I went to, to Indigo and I bought a book, How to Become Rich with Apps. Like I, I totally bought that book. <laughs> and second one was Lean Startup, which was yeah. more helpful. Um, but uh, But... I think that if you're dedicated to to sort of what you want to solve, then it becomes very interesting. And as, the more people recognize that that is the case, I think that's when you become fueled by I don't care what it is. And if yeah. you start finding colleagues that are like, they're so excited. I never felt that we were selling SmartFlow. It was always about check out what we're doing. This is really yeah. cool. I never felt like there's a price to what we do. It was always like, check this out. We solved this problem. And that was exciting. And also it was exciting people that don't get it. I wanted to prove them wrong. And it's usually the, the dearest people to you. It's usually your spouses, your um, father-in-law, which was in my case, my mother. They said that I was stupid, continue working as a veterinarian and don't do it. So this is where, you know, fueled by colleagues say it's great. And then they say no, then that's the sort of fuel for entrepreneurship. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think that's an interesting thing to overcome, isn't it? And I think oftentimes it comes from somewhere, it comes from a place of love, like they don't want you to fail, right? Then they want you to take the of safe, course. they want you to take the safe and easy thing because they want you to be happy and they want you to have, have money and just be safe. And, and I think it's probably a generational difference too, hey? True, yeah. Yeah, I, I've always, I, yeah, I think that's very true. That's the people who are closest to you who uh, often have the most objections yep. to what the you're naysayers. doing. They, oh, the naysayers, the naysayers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, and so now tell me, can you tell me a bit more about what you're doing, uh, kind of expand upon what you're, the project that you're working on right now? Yeah, so, so what we, uh, uh, what I learned through SmartFlow experience, and, and so here's about also entrepreneurship, I think. I think you don't have to switch from veterinary to something else. I think that everything that I learned through my experience as a veterinarian, building a lab, working on SmartFlow, working at IDEX, it's everything within the veterinary domain. So I, I was pretty uh, excited about all that collective knowledge. I was trying to bottle it and see if I can produce something else with the knowledge that I had. So it's a, so it's a combination of uh, knowing how veterinary clinics work, a variety, uh, and then after that, knowing how to improve workflow in these hospitals. And then on top of that, uh, building software product that uh, was applied to large organizations, which is now consolidators. So I think we have a unique opportunity to influence the industry by creating solutions uh, that could be applied to larger organizations. We didn't have that before consolidation. Uh, when we build products like SmartFlow, it was for the clinic, for one clinic, and the change will happen in one clinic. And if you want to apply something at scale, yeah. you can because it's every clinic is individual, an individual culture and individual processes. So to apply something over and over and over, you really have to go into each clinic and tweak it a little bit. What consolidation, even though frowned upon by some people at the moment, sure. so some people uh, are not excited about consolidation. It's an opportunity for the veterinarians to sell their practice, to have their, you know, their, um, that's sort of a retirement plan. But a lot of people don't like consolidation. I think that consolidation is super important because um, you can apply large scale solutions like we do in human healthcare to yeah. these organizations. This is a unique opportunity to make a significant change and impact at that level. So what we're trying to do at Vision Integration Solution is to create a blueprint how to run consolidation. 
Mm. And from the angle to help veterinarians that are going through this transition, because what I feel is happening, there's there's significant burnout, there's significant uh, suicide, as we all know. And I think it's not only about the self-care, but it's also as an industry, we can create change that will create a better experience when you're in the consolidated practice and the culture and the impact could be significant when you have one uh, governing organization that covers multiple businesses together. So, so collectively, my passion is around those two topics, the, the management of the organizations with the impact on positive experience of it on veterinarians, because I'm one, I've experienced what it's like, and I want to help veterinarians. So that's, that's what veterinary integration solution does. Uh, which is actually also associated with the uh, dissertation that I'm writing right now, which I forgot to mention in my. Biography. Yeah, I wanted to circle <laughs> back to that because you, like me, are doing an MBA, and I don't know if you have you completed it or are you still is it still in progress? I think I completed it. Uh, depending on the dissertation marking, they they will maybe <laughs> match with my opinion or not. But uh, I think I've done all the work that is required. So talk to me about your dissertation because I'm really anxious. I'm really interested to know more about it. Yeah, so uh, so my MBA is in international healthcare management, um, and uh, that's the focus that I wanted to have because again, impacting large organizations. And 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 for the last two years, I've researched healthcare and how they apply in different management methodologies because um, I think there is a way to manage organizations better, but empowering the frontline staff. And what I found is that there is a methodology that they applied in human healthcare quite successfully, which is lean. And lean comes from Toyota, uh, you know, manufacturer, and then it was improved. And there is, you know, different variants of that. There's Kanban, and it was applied in many industries. Um, and a lot of people uh, have this angle on lean that heard about it, that it's sort of, you know, it's just, it, it's eliminating waste. It's, it's making people work more, which is, it's not about that. The main principle that I like in lean is actually imp empowering the frontline staff. It's actually listening to the people that are actually doing work. And I've seen it in the San Francisco General Hospital. We've been to Boston. I've been to an organization that uh, created this change in the healthcare, and they're, uh, they're called Catalysis. And they've done large um, hospital. They created a large hospital network across US, Canada, and in Europe that follow these principles from the frontline staff to the executive level. So this is something I became passionate about. So the dissertation for my MBA is applying lean principles to the management of consolidators and uh, with the goal of decreasing the burnout. Uh, so that is the topic for dissertation. And we did a, we did a study uh, in June, which we're about to publish. And we, we were looking for a thousand people to respond on whether they are burned out. We used the... Um, Professional Fulfillment Index that was developed by uh, in Stanford, and uh, and we found out pretty interesting results. Um, so so that is incorporated as a part of research of my dissertation into it. Cool. Do you have any uh, results that you can share or at this time before publication? Yeah. Uh, well, again, whether they accept them or not, but the results are there's. Uh, I was seeking to uh, the, the main thing because I've been talking about the corporation. I was corporations. I was looking whether people are more burned out in consolidators rather than in private practice. But the number one question that I asked uh, I, this this research is whether the industry is burned out as it is because everybody says it is, but was it quantified? Are people burned out? Yeah. Definitely. So definitely veterinarians are burned out. Um, and uh, there's sort of three questions. One is uh, about the burnout, another one about compassion uh, towards their profession and, and, and patients and, and owners and, and empathy. Those are the three sort of components of this tool that I used. Yeah. The interesting thing is veterinarians are compassionate. They have empathy and they're burned out. So they still love their, they don't hate profession and they're burned out. They love their profession and they're burned out, which is super unfortunate. And I think it's worth looking at. So that's number one conclusion that we, uh, that we reached. The second one, uh, which was incidental finding, um, was that the younger uh, population of veterinary professionals is burned out more than the older. So under 40, we're way more burned out than over 60 or sort of that baby boomer. So 
you know, and I have my hypothesis around it, it will be interesting to follow through. But I think it's this, again, this dynamic of how people are not stuck with the same profession for profession for life. The attention span of millennials and such, I think, is playing a role here so that younger people that uh, they, they focus less on one thing and they're, you know, they want to be, uh, uh, they want to be measured on their success. It needs to be brought back to them. So there's a way to work with millennials. Um, and the, the third thing I think is that, um, we probably can cut this out because I forgot my thought here. Okay, um, no and then, but there's a third, but there's <laughs> a third part to the study. So, so the third component that, uh, that was shot, not shocking, I suspected, but again, as an outcome that that now is clear, and I think it's going to be pretty loud, and it should be, is we measured both, we interviewed or surveyed both technicians and veterinarians, and actually technicians turned out to be way more burned out than veterinarians. So we're talking so much about not another vet, and we're talking so much about the suicide in veterinary industry. I, you know, I'm fully passionate about the topic, but technicians turn out that are affected even more. So we need to focus on those people that actually do the work. Yeah. And the sort of, the, the finding that was not super exciting for me is that there was not a huge difference between the consolidated and, pri uh, and private. But the outcome of this for me is that it doesn't matter whether they're more burned out or not in consolidation. Consolidation, because again, there's a, there's a, there's a big umbrella above the number of clinics. We can have an impact on number of clinics if we go at the top of the organization and influence it as a whole. So, so veterinary integration solutions will apply this study to their software product and the methodology of how to run consolidation uh, by implementing some lean principles, which focus on the people empowerment and leveraging big data. Oh, I love that. Uh, thanks for sharing some of the results from your study. I think that's really, that kind of integrates really nicely with the work that I did on um, career paths. Um, about 75% of practitioners said that they considered leaving practice. Um, oh my God. And even if, yeah, even if they didn't, and even if they didn't ultimately end up leaving practice, that's a huge number, isn't it? Um, and we know that that's a, yeah, 75% of women and 61% of men, which is a significant difference. Now we focused on veterinarians again, but um, I would love to repeat that study in technicians because I'd be just so interested to know what, what their thoughts are and how what their experience has been with their career paths. But um, yeah, I think, um, is, there, is there advice that you would like to share with our community knowing that that's students, veterinarians and veterinary technicians about career path and knowing what you know about your career and the ways that you found satisfaction? Yeah, well, there, there's two. I think that the main thing is that if anybody is frustrated or, or scared, I met a couple of people recently that they just finished vet school and they don't like it. They don't, want, they don't like the industry. I think there's so much opportunity when you become a veterinarian or if you're working in the veterinary domain, the, the opportunities are unlimited. You just need to look for them. There's software you can build a lab like I did. You can, within the corporate organization, there's much bigger and longer career ladder where you can expand from just being a technician or being the, the practice manager further into the organization. Uh, you know, Mars as the biggest consolidator has so much research that they do. So there's so many opportunities. Just don't get frustrated with the fact that you are what you do and then that's it. There's mm -hmm. so much more. And then that's, you know, that's within the existing organizations. And then there's also find a problem and fix it if you're entrepreneurial and see if you can fix it and create some sort of proof of concept prototype or something like that. And right now in this you know, in this day, you can start a startup with, you know, with just an idea because especially software, you know, it's all available. There's huge grants that companies like Google, Amazon are giving for, you know, starting something on their servers. There's the opportunities are unlimited. So just don't get stuck. Don't get frustrated. Uh, find the network, talk to people like Melanie uh, and find the career paths that may fit your needs. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. That was just wonderful. Thank you.